What's up guys? Come on, man. I got got by the clickbait. I just made this video because I watched a headline that I, a reliable source, usually, this is the second time the same MMA channel has got me though. They're an MMA news source. I'm not going to say the name because I watch your channel and I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. But this, this is the second time they got me with clickbait. I watched their video. Um, they're claiming that Dustin Poirier and Nate is booked. So I made a whole video because I got all excited and I didn't check the second or third resources. I didn't fact check it, which I'm going to have to on his channel now. But yeah, so I made a video talking about how cool of a fight this is going to be. So now it's not booked. Here's my disclaimer of it's not booked, but enjoy the video anyway, because <laughs> there's other cool stuff in it too. You guys, are you freaking kidding me? Nate Diaz versus Dustin Poirier? Are you freaking kidding me? I don't even know what that looks like, you know? Because I haven't seen, well, I almost said I haven't seen Nate fight anybody aggressive in a long time. But that's not true. He fought Jorge, and Jorge's a He's aggressive as crap. Um, they both have good stamina. Obviously, I think um, they're both durable, too. I just don't know what that's going to look like. What is that going to look like? You guys tell me. What What is that going to look like? I don't know what beef they're building. I, I don't know what the storyline is yet. Um, I know that they're talking shit back and forth online. I've been working a lot lately, so I haven't gotten to catch up on all the latest news. But I still get the essentials because here we are talking about Nate and Poirier, and that just got announced, I believe, yesterday. So, I mean, here's another one. We're hearing Tony Ferguson and Michael Chandler. Like, how interesting is that? Chandler... They're both coming off of losses, two losses in a row, I believe. Let's see, Chandler, two losses in a row. He fought Gaethje and he fought Oliveira. Were those his two last fights? Yeah, and he lost both of those. Nate is coming off of a loss from Leon Edwards. And then who did he fight before that? I think he fought like Pettis before that. Was Pettis before that? Or no, or was Jorge before that? If it was Jorge, then they're both coming off of two losses. I think it was Jorge. I think they're both coming off of two losses. That'll be interesting, but they're both durable. They're both awesome fighters. Um, I, I wonder if they would do a three or a five rounder for them. It would be a main event, so it'd definitely be a five rounder, which is weird. Because they're not really... Are are they contenders? I guess they're contenders for uh, a shot at the title still. Because they're in the top 10. And all top 10s are pretty much content. Like, they, they have a shot at the title. They're like one or two fights away from the title. Based on, like, a performance. An impressive performance. I'm starting to think that UFC... Everything is based on performance. And, and basically what's, ah, there's more than that factored in. There's, there's so many different things, but performance can make a world of difference. Like you're telling me if let's say Hamza and Bilal happen, right? And then like Bilal goes in there and just starches Hamza. I, I'm, I'm just saying, I know that's not going to happen, but I'm just saying if it did, Bilal would probably immediately get a title shot in his next fight. And he could rightfully demand that. He could get on the mic and be like, Kamara Usman, you saw what I did to your boy, so you're next. And then there you go. Like, Dana White doesn't have to figure out Usman's next fight. He knows that it would be Bilal. We know that's not going to happen, but I'm just giving you a freaking example. Yeah. Nothing is going on in the UFC. I'm going crazy. I've been watching reruns over and over and over. I've been watching. I watched um, 
Justin Gaethje and Chandler again. I watched it twice, actually. That's such a beast fight. That's probably my favorite fight. What is your favorite fight? You know, there's the most popular fights, but what is your favorite fight? I don't know. I think Justin Gaethje and, and uh, Michael Chandler is my new favorite. Just, just brawl. When Chandler, like, walked, just walked toward Gaethje with his hands down and let him, like, fuck him up. I was like, that is so stupid. Why is he doing that? Don't do that. You can still win this, you know, keep trying. But, like, I was thinking wrong. He should, I mean, the, I love that he did that. He shouldn't do that. That's terrible for your brain. But um, it's so savage that he did it because he wasn't just giving him free punches. Like, at that moment, I didn't understand what was going on. But then later I realized he, he was showing Justin Gaethje, I am going nowhere. You can't make me quit. And you're not going to finish me. <laughs> And so he was like, take your free punch. Because he gave Justin Gaethje free punches. Think about that, Justin Gaethje. He can knock most of the division out with any one of his punches. Michael Chandler gave him free punches. Like, go ahead, what do you got? And then Justin gave him what he's got. And he kept moving forward and still fighting after that. Michael Chandler, he's one of my absolute favorite fighters to watch right now. He's like the most exciting fighter to watch. And the idea of him fighting Tony Ferguson, who for a very long time has been my favorite fighter in the UFC. Like, I feel bad because of like, you know, the cards he's been dealt and then losing his last three fights. Um, I really wanted him to see him fight Habib. Like when he, like two two times ago <laughs> you know what I mean like the last one I was a little worried but uh the time before that I think it was like their third time they were booked I, I think would have been the perfect time I think the the first second and third time Tony Ferguson fought Habib it would have been it would have been good but you know I think the last time that they were booked, Habib was just going to dominate him. And it was it was going to be like, oh, wow, yeah, totally different level. But I think back like in the first, second, and third time that they were booked, Tony was in a place physically, mentally, and conditionally to where he could have potentially really gave Habib a hard time and maybe even possibly won. I know a lot of you are going to disagree with that, but there's no way you can absolutely tell me you're right because, and there's no way I can absolutely tell you I'm right. I'm just speculating. But uh, either way, that's what this channel's for is discussing these things, right? So I do think Tony could have given Habib maybe his most difficult fight if he had fought him like the first three times that they were booked, but not the last two. Anyway, tell me your thoughts. If you like the content, subscribe, comment down below, throw me some likes, and freaking ring that bell.